The world has always been fascinated by machines that break boundaries and push past what we thought possible. Every era has had its revolutionary invention, and every continent has produced visionaries who challenge global norms. But few stories carry the weight, the skepticism, and the ultimate triumph of the African self-powered car that ran 100 days non-stop without fuel or charging. This is not just a story about technology. It is about resilience, innovation, and the relentless vision of a man named Maxwell Chikambuzo. Born in Zimbabwe, Chikambuzo never fit into the mold of traditional engineers. He had no formal engineering degree, no corporate laboratory backing, and no billionaire sponsors. Yet, his mind produced inventions that rivaled the most well-funded labs in Silicon Valley. The self-powered car was not just another idea. It was a direct challenge to everything we believed about energy, mobility, and sustainability. When news first spread about a car that could power itself indefinitely without plugging into a socket or filling up at a gas station, most of the world dismissed it as fantasy. Critics laughed, scientists doubted, and governments quietly monitored. But then came the 100-day challenge. Chikambuzo decided the only way to silence the doubters was to prove his invention in real-world conditions. No controlled lab, no hidden tricks, just a car, the open road, and time. The vehicle was rolled out quietly, without the flash of a Tesla unveiling or the noise of corporate PR teams. It was a humble machine, not sleek or futuristic, but built with a mission to last. At its core was a revolutionary generator system that drew energy from fields invisible to the naked eye. This system converted ambient radio frequencies and magnetic resonance into usable, continuous power. No fuel tank. No external charging port. Just a car that powered itself, like a perpetual heart beating endlessly. The first day of the test began with reporters, skeptics, and a small crowd of curious onlookers. The car moved forward silently, without exhaust fumes, without the hum of combustion. Hour after hour, day after day, the wheels kept turning. What started as curiosity quickly became global intrigue. By the 10th day, international news outlets began picking up the story. How is this possible? They asked. Energy experts appeared on television panels debating whether the test was real. Some claimed hidden batteries were at play. Others argued it was staged entirely, but the days kept ticking. Day 20 arrived, and still the car showed no signs of stopping. His performance was steady, smooth, and shockingly reliable. Mechanics who inspected it found no signs of trickery. The generator was sealed, unaltered, and working flawlessly. For the people who watched, hope began to replace skepticism. In villages across Africa, whispers began, if this was real, it could mean liberation from fuel dependency forever. For families who spent their limited income on fuel, the idea of a self-powered car was more than science. It was freedom. By day 40, something extraordinary happened. The car became a symbol of resistance against a global system that had long exploited Africa for its resources. It represented the possibility of Africa not just consuming Western technologies, but producing its own that could change the world. Social media campaigns began trending across the continent. 100 days nonstop became more than a test. It was a movement. Young engineers flocked to learn how they too could innovate like Chikambuzo. But with the attention came pressure. International oil companies were not amused. Lobbyists in Europe and America began whispering to governments to investigate. Surely, if this car was real, it would threaten trillion dollar industries. Some called it a hoax. Others labeled Chikambuzo a fraud, but he remained silent, letting the car speak for itself. By day 60, documentaries were already being filmed. Crowds gathered along routes to see the car pass by. Children painted murals of the car, imagining a future where no one would ever need to pay for fuel again. It was not just a machine, it was a dream on wheels. The test endured harsh conditions. Rainstorms drenched the roads, yet the car powered on. Dusty terrains in rural Africa tested its durability, but it never faltered. Night after night, the headlights illuminated the roads, glowing symbols of endurance. Day 70 arrived, and the excitement was global. In America, scientists began to demand access to the technology. 
In Asia, tech companies grew restless at the idea of being left behind. In Europe, policymakers debated whether such a car would collapse their fragile energy strategies. And yet, in Zimbabwe, the car drove on with quiet determination. People began to ask the bigger question. If this was possible for a car, what else could be powered forever? Homes, hospitals, schools, entire cities freed from the grid. By day 80, the doubters were shrinking. Some of the most respected engineers visited the test site. They poked, prodded, and examined every detail. None could find deception. The car was truly self-powered, and this terrified the world. For decades, the narrative had been that Africa was behind, dependent, always catching up. But now, a son of Africa had created something ahead of the entire world. Maxwell Chikambutso was no longer just an inventor. He was a revolutionary, but revolutions are dangerous. On day 85, rumors surfaced that attempts were being made to shut the test down. Political figures warned of security risks. Corporate interests claimed it could destabilize economies. Yet, the people refused to let it stop. Crowds formed protective barriers around the car. This was not just Chikambutso's invention anymore. It was Africa's car. By day 90, it had become unstoppable. No longer a local event, it was now history in the making. Every hour past 90 was a nail in the coffin for those who doubted. Journalists from the world's biggest networks camped outside the test routes, desperate for footage. The car, still silent, still smooth, rolled past them all. The final countdown began. Day 95, day 96, day 97. The suspense grew unbearable. What if it failed now? What if, after all this time, the machine gave up just before the finish line? But it didn't. Day 98, it ran. Day 99, still no failure. And then came day 100. The car completed the challenge. 100 days non-stop, without fuel, without charging, without compromise. The world erupted. For Africa, it was a victory of identity, of possibility, of defiance. For the global establishment, it was a threat too powerful to ignore. And for Maxwell Chikambutso, it was validation. He had done what few dared to even imagine. The car became immortal in memory, a story parents told their children about what Africa could achieve. It inspired new generations of engineers to believe that impossibility was only a word used by the fearful. Even though challenges, censorship, and corporate pushback followed, the 100-day non-stop test remained untouchable proof. Proof that Africa could innovate for itself. Proof that one man's vision could change an entire continent's destiny. Proof that the future of energy did not have to belong to oil rigs, power plants, or multinational corporations. It could belong to people. It could belong to freedom. And it could belong to Africa. That is the story of the self-powered car that ran for 100 days non-stop. The story of how one invention defied the world. The story of a man who refused to accept limits. And the story of a continent rising, one will revolution at a time. Energy has never just been about powering machines. It has always been about who controls society's future. For centuries, Africa's story has been shaped by dependence on foreign powers for energy and technology. Colonial empires drew borders not for people, but for access to coal, oil, and minerals. The legacy of that extraction left Africa rich in resources yet poor in control. Philosophically, energy independence represents more than technology. It is a rebirth of dignity. It is the ability of a continent to say, we can power ourselves without asking permission. For African families who spend much of their income on fuel, independence means freedom from invisible chains. It means no child will miss school because fuel costs rose beyond what parents could pay. It means no hospital will shut down mid-surgery because diesel ran out. Energy independence restores time, money, and choice to people long denied all three. But the impact goes deeper than economics. It reshapes identity. For too long, the global narrative has portrayed Africa as dependent, waiting for Western aid, waiting for Chinese factories, waiting for outside solutions. A self-powered car that can run 100 days without stopping challenges that narrative at its core. It declares that Africa is no longer waiting, it is leading. Philosophically, this flips the balance of power. 
Energy has always been the invisible empire, the silent master dictating who rises and who falls. With energy independence, Africa can dream without limits. Imagine universities powered perpetually, where students study under lights that never go out. Imagine farms irrigated endlessly without fuel pumps or grid shortages. Imagine cities where streetlights burn bright every night without government rationing. This vision is not simply technological, it is moral. It answers the question, should progress be reserved for the wealthy or is it a human right? When energy is free, accessible, and abundant, poverty itself begins to dissolve. Philosophers once argued that freedom comes when people can think and act without coercion. But in modern times, true freedom comes when people can live without energy dependence. Energy is the blood of modern civilization. If Africa can produce it freely, then Africa can finally own its future. This changes not only how the world sees Africa, but how Africans see themselves, no longer the last to adopt new technologies, but the first to pioneer them, no longer victims of scarcity, but architects of abundance. The philosophical impact extends into politics too. Governments that once feared protests over fuel prices could redirect resources to health, education, and innovation. Leaders could focus on uplifting people rather than negotiating for oil subsidies or foreign loans. Energy independence becomes political independence. It becomes cultural independence. It becomes psychological independence. It tells every young African engineer, you are not behind, you are ahead. And in that realization lies the greatest revolution. Africa will no longer measure progress by Western timelines, but by its own destiny. The self-powered car is not just a machine. It is a philosophy on wheels. It is a question posed to the world. What happens when the poorest continent becomes the richest in energy? And it is an answer whispered back. The future begins where freedom of energy begins.